So, the Orlando Magic and Klay Thompson have mutual interest. Does Klay give Orlando what they need to conquer the East and make a finals appearance? And is this truly the end of an era for the Warriors? Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Swish Culture. With the ability to open up northwards of 60 million in cap space, the Magic can give whatever they want to Klay Thompson. Today's video will cover what the Magic would need to do to get to the next level and what this would mean for the Warriors if Clay decides to head to Orlando. Also, what are the chances that Clay even takes a deal? There are some interesting facts that will determine how this scenario will likely play out, so be sure to watch the entire video. Just don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Switch Culture for the most analytical and entertaining NBA content on the planet. Now get ready. You're about to get the magic were eliminated by the cleveland cavaliers where it took the best out of donovan mitchell to close out the rebuilt magic in a game seven one of the biggest shortages of this team has been the fact that they lack shooting your best shooter this season has been paolo bancaro who shot 40 percent on threes problem with that starts with the fact that he's the Magic's primary offensive initiator, leading the team with a 29.6% usage rate. Although Joe Ingles did shoot 43.5% coming off the bench, but we're gonna ignore that for now. Bankero was also 6'10", and with a bag that gets him any shot he wants anywhere on the floor, an outside game should only be complementary to his abilities. And it is! For a player like Bankero to be shooting 40% from distance shows that he has a complete game is going to be a dangerous first option for years to come. So it goes without saying that he isn't going to be able to take enough outside shots to properly space the floor for Orlando, especially considering he's the player that would be needing that space. So who's currently spacing the floor for the Magic? Good question. Their highest volume shooter is Jalen Suggs with 6.9 attempts per game. Volume shooters like Steph Curry and Damian Lillard are averaging upwards of 10 or more three-pointers per game and in the case of Steph Curry, hitting them at a rate above 40%. Okay, so maybe it isn't fair to compare to the greatest shooter to ever play the game. Let's use someone everyone's been saying is washed. Klay Thompson. Klay shot 9 attempts from deep this past season, hitting 38.7%, only 0.2 percentage points higher than the lowest he's ever shot in his career. That also happened 2 years ago when the Warriors won the championship. So if you're the Magic and you're looking at what you're getting out of Gary Harris, if you look at Klay Thompson's record and the cavernous gap between the two, you're probably salivating at the addition of a player like Klay to that roster. That's an enormous upgrade for Orlando. Not only do they win more regular season games after winning 47 last season, they now have the floor spacing from the sheer respect players have for Klay, whether he's giving you his best night or not. Bank Hero now gets to feast and get to the line there's not as much pressure, although there is still plenty, on Franz Wagner to shoot the three. If anything, he'll also benefit from defenders selling out on Clay. Simply put, he'll be getting a lot more wide open looks. From that perspective alone, Orlando would be foolish not to seriously look at getting a free agent such as Clay Thompson, who could well be given what some would consider a low ball offer from Golden State, who's currently strapped for cash. This is the other side of the coin. You're probably wondering. Well, if the Magic could use Clay and get even further in the playoffs, why can't the Warriors offer Clay Thompson the same amount of money, keep him, and bolster up the rest of the roster so they can make the playoffs? Good question. First off, let's acknowledge that both teams had pretty decent, fairly identical seasons, with the Magic coming away with one more win than the 46-36 record Warriors. With so many teams finishing around this area of the spectrum, that is, four teams with 47 and 35 records and three total teams with 46 and 36 records. All the Warriors would have needed was an average performing season from either of Clay or Wiggins to stand above the rest. At least when it comes to the Eastern Conference anyway. The Magic made it through fairly easily considering they were the fifth seed. Meanwhile, the Warriors with just one less win ended up with the 10th seed. Had the Warriors been in the East, they would have finished eighth and had a better chance of making the playoffs. So why would a not very good starter from a, let's say, mid-team help another mid-team become better? Welcome to the intricacies of player matchups, coaching, and specialists. Now unfortunately, we won't have enough time to cover every single one of these, but we will cover specialists. 
an interesting group of players that the Warriors built a dynasty upon, but unfortunately haven't been able to make work in recent years. Klay Thompson is one of, if not the most well-known specialist in the league. There's no question about it, Klay Thompson is a catch and shoot 3 and D player that spaces the floor on one end and guards 1 through 3 on the other end which includes primary offensive initiators as well as ISO players. The premise of what Klay is to the league is perfect for the Warriors and literally perfect for any team in the NBA. Klay Thompson in his prime would have 29 teams pre-planning roster demolitions if there was even a hint that he could become available. This is why he was so deadly next to Stephen Curry and Draymond Green. The trio provided lockdown defense on one end and lights out shooting on the other. This team proved that being a specialist can be a crucial aspect of a championship team, but clearly that's not the Klay Thompson that's available anymore. Klay is not really spacing the floor at the same level as he did in his prime and frankly his defense has suffered as well. He's shown flashes that he's capable of guarding second or third options, but he's not quite the same guarding first options, hence Steve Kerr putting him in position to guard threes and fours instead of ones and twos. The fact that the Magic were able to make it as far as they did with such poor shooting when compared to the Warriors highlights more than anything the difference in the conferences but to some extent coaching. The Warriors were the 7th best 3 point shooting team this past season after shooting 38% from deep. Meanwhile, the Magic ranked 7th from last, shooting 35.2%. This actually reveals something that most people might not have realized, and it's that the 3-point shooting was not the problem for the Warriors. The 6 teams that finished ahead of Golden State in 3-point shooting also finished ahead of them in the regular season. To take it even further, a total of 11 teams shot worse than Golden State, yet finished ahead of them in the standings. This also means that despite horrid shooting nights, Clay was still shooting well within a reasonable range and that the Warriors had other issues that led to the team performing the way it did. This is also why a team like the Magic would happily take Clay Thompson off the Warriors hands. Clay shot 38.7% in what was a down year and with him being their de facto volume shooter, not only would he hold more value to a team like Orlando, but if Clay goes back to shooting above 40%, the Magic could see themselves getting to the second round based on just that fact. They've got a young core set to improve next year, which could see enough improvement to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of the Eastern Conference. Now, Clay wouldn't replace Suggs in the Magic lineup. Last season, the Magic had Gary Harris as the shooting guard and in 24 minutes a game, averaged just 7 points while shooting 37% from 3 and 44% from the floor on 5.5 attempts per game. Clay replacing Harris in the lineup would be a good first step in the right direction. Harris is an unrestricted free agent this season and likely won't get an offer sheet from the Magic. Now interestingly enough, the Magic had the 4th best bench points per game in the regular season behind only the Pacers, Jazz and Warriors. They also ranked 4th in steals per game, 3rd in blocks per game and 3rd in field goal efficiency making them one of the most formidable bench units in the league. This shows the depth of the Magic and the potential they have with just this trade coming next season. Both Mo Wagner and Joe Ingles have a team option this year. While the team will most likely retain Wagner, Ingles and his 11 million could be looking for a team. This will free up cash for any veteran free agent that might become available. Specifically, what they need is better rebounding. The Magic were the third worst team when it came to collecting contested rebounds, something that really shows itself in the playoffs. To counter, they could make a bid for Jonas Valanciunas, a top 5 rebounder last season, ahead of Rudy Gobert and Joel Embiid. The only question is, would Klay Thompson take this deal to play in the East and possibly make a deep playoff run with a young squad in $30 million in his pocket? While it is possible, the fact that the Warriors didn't trade him at the last deadline means that it is very unlikely Klay Thompson leaves. Steve Kerr also mentioned that the tight-knit group will likely ride for another two years before anything changes. The Warriors will try to retain Klay Thompson, but at the end of the day, that's going to depend on the Warriors' offer sheet compared to the Magic's offer sheet. The Magic are likely willing to overpay as Klay is worth more to them than he is to the Warriors in terms of raw numbers. However, there is sentimental value to consider for the Warriors' case to keep Klay. On the other side of that same coin, Klay is already a Bay Area legend and he might consider what he did to be enough and wants to play the rest of his career, possibly carving out his own path or maximizing his payday as well as his playing time. Now even though his 3 point shooting didn't necessarily hurt the Warriors as much as it seemed, what did hurt was the expectation of what his shooting was supposed to add to the team. It didn't. 
Clay is now ranked amongst your regular shooters in terms of overall shooting percentages, then a diminished role at Golden State that allows them to sign a superstar talent to help the team could see the Warriors compete at the same level they did in years past. As long as he doesn't consider the Warriors offer disrespectful, he'll likely resign and forego a lucrative contract. All I have to say is this, clay has got a big decision to make. Let me know if you think Clay will take a $30 million deal and a starting role, or if he'll ride it off into the sunset with the team that he helped build. Post your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish.